2019. As a society, we have come a long way, but there is so much further to go in terms of true equality and even just common sense. For many decades, women have been relegated to standing by their men, but finally, they're eclipsing them and doing so in grand fashion. The glass ceiling is quickly being shattered as more and more women are striving to take their rightful place amongst the stars, both in their personal lives and, more importantly, in the current presidential race. Kamala Devi Harris was born on October 20, 1964, and is an American lawyer and politician who has been serving as the junior United States Senator from California since 2017. Harris, a member of the Democratic Party, previously served as the 27th District Attorney of San Francisco from 2004 to 2011, and the 32nd Attorney General of California from 2011 until 2017. She is currently a candidate for the Democratic nomination for President of the United States in the 2020 election. She was born in Oakland, California, and is a graduate of Howard University and University of California, Hastings College of the Law. During the 1990s, Harris worked in the San Francisco District Attorney's Office and the City Attorney of San Francisco's Office. In 2004, she was elected District Attorney of San Francisco. Harris won the election as California's Attorney General in 2010 and was re-elected in 2014 by an incredibly wide margin. It was on November 8, 2016, that she defeated Loretta Sanchez in the 2016 Senate election to succeed outgoing Senator Barbara Boxer thus becoming California's third female U.S. Senator and the first of either Jamaican or Indian ancestry. Since becoming a Senator, Harris has supported federal descheduling of cannabis, single-payer health care, the DREAM Act, support for sanctuary cities and lowering the tax burden for the working and middle classes, while at the same time raising taxes on corporations and the wealthiest 1% of Americans. Given her accomplishments, it's easy to see why Harris is considered a top contender and potential frontrunner for the 2020 Democratic nomination. On January the 21st, 2019, Harris announced her candidacy for President of the United States in the 2020 United States election. Within the first 24 hours after her announcement, she went on to tie a record set by Bernie Sanders in 2016 for the most donations raised in a day following announcement. According to a police estimate, over 20,000 people attended Harris's formal campaign launch event in Oakland, California on January the 27th, and her support rose by between six to nine points in polls following the first Democratic presidential debate. Part of what makes Harris such a rising star on the political scene is her positions on the issues facing our country. Since Harris's election to the Senate, she has maintained a 100% rating by the Abortion Rights Advocacy Group, Planned Parenthood Action Fund, and a 0% rating by the anti-abortion group, National Right to Life Committee. Harris was also endorsed by EMILY's List, an American political action committee that aims to help elect pro-choice Democratic female candidates to office in 2015 during her senatorial campaign. In February of 2019, Harris and Republican Susan Collins introduced the Help Extract Animals from Red Tape Act, also known as the Heart Act. This bill was meant to assist animals previously rescued by the federal government from being used in animal fights. She remarked that she was proud to reintroduce this bill to streamline the process of getting these animals the care they need and ensuring that they are properly cared for in the future. 
Harris's 2020 campaign has rejected most corporate donations and has committed to disavowing money from corporate political action committees to use for her presidential campaign in favor of relying on large and small individual donors. Our campaign is not taking a dime from corporate PACs or lobbyists. And that was a very deliberate choice, said Harris of this course of action. In the first quarter of 2019, almost 40% of Harris's donations came from smaller donors who made contributions of less than $200, while over 60% of her donations came from larger donors who gave $200 or more. Harris didn't support the legalization of recreational marijuana right away, but later moved to support its legalization. In May of 2018, Harris announced she would co-sponsor the Marijuana Justice Act, which Senator Cory Booker introduced in August of 2017. This legislation would end marijuana's status as a Schedule I drug under the Controlled Substance Act. In July of 2019, Harris and Representative Jerry Nandler introduced the Moore Act of 2019. This legislation would serve to decriminalize marijuana on the federal level, in addition to eliminating low-level marijuana possession convictions and authorizing grants to members of communities of color as part of an effort to reverse decades of damage cannabis criminalization had inflicted to those respective communities. Harris is vehemently against the death penalty, but has said that she would review each case in which it was applicable individually. Her position on the matter was questioned in April of 2004, when SFPD officer Isaac Espinoza was killed in the Bayview district. She announced that she would not seek the death penalty for the man accused of his murder. Her decision sparked protests from Senator Dianne Feinstein, the San Francisco Police Officers Association, and others. Those who supported her decision not to seek the death penalty included San Francisco supervisors Sophie Maxwell and Tom Amiano, in whose district the killing occurred. The jury found the convicted killer, David Hill, guilty of second-degree murder and he was given the maximum sentence for the conviction, life without the possibility of parole. Over the years, Harris has expressed her belief that life without possibility of parole is a better and more cost-effective punishment. The California Commission on the Fair Administration of Justice states that the death penalty costs $137 million per year. If the system was changed to life without possibility of parole, the annual costs would be approximately $12 million per year. Harris believes that the money saved from this resulting surplus could put 1,000 more police officers into service in San Francisco alone. On July 31, 2019, after Attorney General William Barr announced that the United States federal government would continue the use of the death penalty for the first time in over 20 years, Harris was a co-sponsor of a bill banning the death penalty. That struggle continues. Education and the environment are very much a big part of Harris's bid for office. Together with Pakistani activist for female education and Nobel Prize laureate Malala Yousafzai, Harris has argued for treating habitual and chronic truancy among children in elementary school as a crime committed by the parents of truant children. Harris argues that there is a direct and distinct connection between habitual truancy in elementary school, which leads to crime later in life. This has garnered Harris the endorsement of the California Federation of Teachers. During her time as San Francisco District Attorney, Harris created the Environmental Justice Unit in the San Francisco District Attorney's Office, and she has used it to prosecute several industries and individuals for pollution. Most notable among them are U-Haul, Alameda Publishing Corporation, and the Costco Busan oil spill. Harris is also a staunch advocate for strong enforcement of environmental protection laws. 
In October 2017, she was one of 19 senators to sign a letter to Administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency, Scott Pruitt, questioning Pruitt's decision to repeal the Clean Power Plan, asserting that the repeal's proposal used mathematical sleights of hand to overstate the costs of industry compliance with the 2015 rule and understate the benefits that will be lost if the 2017 repeal is finalized. And science denying and math fabricating would fail to satisfy the requirements of the law, nor will it slow the increase in frequency and intensity of extreme weather events, the inexorable rise in sea levels or the other dire effects of global warming that our planet is already experiencing. In September 2018, Harris was one of eight senators to sponsor the Climate Risk Disclosure Act, a bill described by co-sponsor Elizabeth Warren as using market forces to speed up the transition from fossil fuels to cleaner energy, reducing the odds of an environmental and financial disaster without spending a dime of taxpayer money. She stated that her goal would be achieving 100% of US electricity from renewable energy sources, and that she supports a Green New Deal, an idea made popular by first-term Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, because climate change is an existential threat to all of us. Harris is also a formidable advocate of firearm safety. This has earned Harris an F rating from the National Rifle Association for her consistent efforts supporting gun control. In Harris's second term as district attorney, she said that getting guns off the street was a priority. In response to the 2017 Las Vegas shooting, Harris stated that she supports the call for more gun control, citing that thoughts and prayers are inadequate answers to the shooting. Harris stated emphatically that we must also commit ourselves to action. Another moment of silence won't suffice. Harris unveiled a plan on August the 14th, 2019, that would address domestic terrorism while prioritizing increasing the difficulty for suspected individuals to either acquire or keep firearms through the formation of domestic terrorism prevention orders that are meant to empower law enforcement officers and family members with the ability to petition the federal courts for a temporary restriction on a person's access to firearms in the event that they exhibit clear evidence of dangerousness. According to Harris, loaded guns should not be a few clicks away for any domestic terrorist with a laptop or smartphone, and specified that the need to take action to keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people and stop violent, hate-fueled attacks before they happen. These stances, some of which remain controversial to the less forward-thinking individual, have helped to usher Harris into the forefront of the political spectrum. But she's certainly not alone. There are several other smart and powerful women ready to give Harris a run for her money. Born on June the 22nd, 1949, Elizabeth Ann Warren is an American politician and former academic who is currently serving as the senior United States Senator from Massachusetts since the year 2013. Warren was formerly a law school professor specializing in bankruptcy law. A progressive and a member of the Democratic Party, she has a keen focus on economic opportunity, consumer protection and the social safety net. Warren graduated from the University of Houston and Rutgers Law School and has since been teaching law at several universities, including the University of Houston, the University of Texas at Austin, the University of Pennsylvania, and even Harvard University. Before beginning her political career, she was one of the most influential professors in the field of commercial law and has authored five and co-authored six books. Warren's first push into public policy began in 1995, when she worked to oppose what would become a 2005 Act restricting bankruptcy access for individuals. Her national profile grew exponentially during the late 2000s, 
following her forceful public stances in favour of more stringent banking regulations after the financial crisis of 2007 and 2008. Warren served as chair of the Congressional Oversight Panel of the Troubled Asset Relief Programme and was vital in creating the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, of which she served as the first special advisor under President Obama. In 2009, the Boston Globe bestowed Warren with the honor of being called the Bostonian of the Year, and the Women's Bar Association of Massachusetts revered her with the Lelia J. Robinson Award, which is presented to women who have captured the spirit of pioneering in the legal profession, which leads to making difference in their community. Warren was named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World in 2009, 2010, and again in 2015. The National Law Journal has repeatedly named Warren one of the 50 most influential women attorneys in America, and in 2010, Journal honored her as one of the 40 most influential attorneys of the decade. In 2011, Warren was inducted into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. In January 2012, she was named one of the top 20 U.S. progressives by the British New Statesman magazine. In 2009, Warren became the first professor in Harvard's history to win the Law School's Sachs Frund Teaching Award for a second time. In 2011, she delivered the commencement address at the Rutgers Law School in Newark and obtained an honorary Doctor of Laws degree and membership in the Order of the Coif. In November 2012, Warren won the U.S. Senate election in Massachusetts, defeating incumbent Republican Scott Brown, thus becoming the first female senator from Massachusetts. From there, she was assigned to the Senate Special Committee on Aging, the Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs Committee, as well as the Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee. Warren won re-election by a considerable margin in 2018, defeating Republican nominee Jeff Deal. On February the 9th, 2019, at a rally in Lawrence, Massachusetts, Warren announced her candidacy for president in the 2020 United States election. Warren has become well known for her many plans to fix the United States. On her website, she lists more than 45 plans for subjects including universal childcare, climate change, health care, ending the opioid crisis, clean energy, reducing corporate influence at the Pentagon, ending Wall Street's stranglehold on our economy, foreign policy, an ultra-millionaire tax, and others. Warren has been highly critical of President Trump's administration and has expressed many concern over Trump's various conflicts of interest. The Presidential Conflicts of Interest Act, written by Warren, was first read in the Senate in January 2017. In November 2018, Warren said that she would not vote for Trump's United States-Mexico-Canada agreement, known as USMCA, as it won't stop outsourcing, it won't raise wages, and it won't create jobs. It's NAFTA 2.0. Warren also believes that the USMCA would make it harder to lower drug prices because it would allow drug companies to lock in the prices they charge for various drugs. Another area in which Warren has been highly critical of Trump is his immigration policies. In 2018, she called for abolishing U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, known as ICE for short. Warren has denounced U.S. involvement in the Saudi Arabian-led intervention in Yemen in support of Yemen's government against the Houthis. In January of 2019, Warren criticized Trump's decision to withdraw U.S. troops from Syria and Afghanistan. While she wholeheartedly agreed that U.S. troops should be withdrawn from Syria and Afghanistan, she believes that such withdrawals should be part of a coordinated plan formed with U.S. allies. After reading the Mueller report in April of 2019, Warren called on the House of Representatives to begin impeachment proceedings against Trump, stating, the Mueller report lays out facts showing that a hostile foreign government attacked our 2016 election to help Donald Trump, 
and Donald Trump welcomed that help. Once elected, Donald Trump obstructed the investigation into that attack. Another shining star on the political scene is Marianne Deborah Williamson. Born July the 8th, 1952, Williamson is an American author, spiritual leader, politician and activist. She has written 13 books, including four New York Times number one bestsellers in the Advice, How-To and Miscellaneous category. She is the founder of Project Angel Food, a volunteer food delivery program that serves homebound people with HIV and AIDS and other life-threatening illnesses. Williamson is also the co-founder of the Peace Alliance, a non-profit education and advocacy organization supporting peace-building projects. Back in 2014, Williamson unsuccessfully ran as an independent to represent California's 33rd Congressional District in the United States House of Representatives. But then, on January the 29th, 2019, she formally announced her campaign to seek the Democratic nomination for the 2020 United States presidential election. According to Williamson, she developed her liberal views from her father, Sam, who she called an armchair revolutionary. When she was just 13, she told her father that a teacher told her that the US had to fight the Vietnam War in Vietnam to keep it from coming to America. In response, her father took her whole family to Vietnam as a means to make sure the military-industrial complex did not eat her brain and convince her that war was okay. Williamson was also affected by a trip she took as a child with her family to Soviet-controlled Hungary. It was there that she witnessed her father slip their tour guide his business card and told him, you get out of here, I'll take care of you the rest of the way. Williams said her father inspired her to grow up and change the world, be the strong one, and hold other people who are burdened with serious problems. Williamson is a self-described pretty straight-line progressive Democrat who has social revolution at the center of her being and describes her policies as a renovation of a sociopathic economic system focused on short-term profit maximization she has stated that her interest lies in the creation of an enlightened society. Williams supports intervening early with at-risk youth through resources, education and counselling. She supports expanding restorative justice programmes, introducing trauma education in the juvenile justice system, expanding life skills programmes in prisons and advancing hunger prevention, which she says is the root cause of violence. She is also a staunch supporter of the Individuals with Disabilities Act, along with initiatives to guarantee voting rights and accessible polling to those with disabilities. Williamson has pledged to appoint disabled citizens to her cabinet. She also supports the Disability Integration Act, requiring healthcare insurers to cover home healthcare. Williamson has pledged that should she be elected, she would try to get the act passed during her first 100 days in office. Williamson also supports various transition programs which have been implemented to move institutionalized people with disabilities to supported independent living situations. She supports reforming social security insurance as a means to ensure that people with disabilities are not excluded from entitlement programs if they earn more than $1,220 a month. In addition to that, she supports including disability policy, including disabled human rights in US trade deals. Williamson supports sex education in the disabled community, including sexual abuse reporting initiatives. She also supports sensitivity training for police for situations in which they would have to interact with those with disabilities and mental illnesses. Williamson supports the idea of free tuition at public colleges, community colleges and trade schools. She's also a huge supporter of radical reduction in college loan debt and in some cases total forgiveness of college loan debt. She has expressed her support for treating student loans like other debt, 
in that debtors could refinance at lower interest levels and those who declare bankruptcy could have their debt forgiven. Family is one of the issues at the forefront of Williamson's campaign. She supports paid leave for family, medical, pregnancy and vacation, pay equity, government support for union rights, childcare services and a universal basic income. Williamson is a supporter of portable retirement plans, the development of initiatives to protect homeowners from predatory lending, an increase in access to home loan modifications, SNAP, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Programme, coverage for low-income families and initiatives to understand and lower happenings of homelessness among veterans. Williamson also supports the creation of a Department of Children and Youth, a new cabinet-level agency to be implemented specifically to create programmes to reduce infant mortality, illness, food security, homelessness and under-education. Williamson has a watchful eye on the issue of finance and supports corporations having a responsibility to stakeholders, not just to stockholders. She supports making middle-class tax cuts permanent and repealing the corporate tax cuts in the 2017 tax bill. Williamson also supports the restoration and modernization of the Glass-Steagall Act with the specific intent of separating commercial banks from investment banks in order to prevent banks from making high risky and ultimately costly investments. Williamson supports keeping corporations from engaging in tax avoidance, including tax avoidance for carried interest and exchange traded funds income. She also supports enforcement of antitrust laws and the usage of a federal fee for financial transactions such as buying stocks or exchanging currency. Williamson is also in support of independent regulation of the pharmaceutical industry to prevent what she has called predatory practices. Williamson says that gun control is an issue that is very personal to her. On November the 4th, 2018, she gave a passionate keynote address to several hundred Muslim and Jewish women at the Sisterhood of a Salam Shalom conference in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, eight days after 11 Jews were murdered at Pittsburgh's Tree of Life synagogue. Williamson addressed the crowd with her heart on her sleeve. I am speaking to you as a Jewish woman. Where fear has been turned into a political force in America, we must turn love into a political force. With the history of Muslims and the history of Jews and of blacks and of immigrants, it is time. It is time for something fierce to rise up out of us, to say, you did it to my grandparents and you are not going to do it to my kids. Williamson supports the elimination of the sale of assault rifles and semi-automatic weapons, banning bump stocks and high-capacity magazines, and the abolition of the current limits on the Center for Disease Control's ability to track and record gun ownership numbers. She is very much in support of child safety locks on all guns, mandatory universal background checks and waiting periods for all gun dealers, including at gun shows and sporting retailers, and restrictions on the ability of the mentally ill to purchase firearms. Williamson believes in red flag laws, which allow a judge to issue an order that gives law enforcement powers to confiscate guns from individuals who are deemed a risk to themselves or others and making the process of getting gun licenses similar to that of obtaining driver's licenses. The prevention and quality of life is high upon Williamson's agenda. She supports universal health care under a Medicare for all type of plan and has also expressed that she supports extending health coverage, including coverage for home care, to currently uninsured Americans. Williamson has stated many times that she would like to develop a healthcare system opposed to what she says is a disease management system that the US currently has. Inclusive of that, Williamson has shown extreme interest in support of longer doctor visits, reimbursements of medical professionals for wellness and prevention care, nutrition and lifestyle education, and limiting the marketing of hyper-processed and sugary foods. She has also declared support for ending subsidies to the agricultural production of unhealthy food in favour of healthy food production. 
Williamson wants to expand the roles of the EPA and FDA in order to regulate toxin inclusion in the environment and food supplies, to offer guidance pertaining to the lowering of societal stress and to help implement healthy habits in local communities. She also supports limiting the profit motive in medicine as much as possible. This would include the seeking of non-pharmaceutical ways to treat mental health issues whenever and wherever possible. Williamson is of the mindset that treating mental health is just as important as physical health. Both of these must be treated accordingly if our society is to ever normalise treatment. Williamson also believes in intelligent immigration and supports a full path to citizenship for undocumented immigrants with no serious criminal background. She supports reducing the cost of naturalisation and increasing resources to help immigrants navigate the process in a far simpler fashion. Investing in smart border security is vital to her beliefs, calling for better monitoring of airplanes, ships, trucks crossing the border and submarines. Williamson hopes one day to see the overturning of the three-year and ten-year re-entry bars. Williamson also supports the DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, initiative and believes that expanding protections and naturalisation to undocumented immigrants who were brought here as children, regardless of their current age, is of the utmost importance. Williamson is very much in support of the Equality Act, she believes in a world which supports equality in housing, healthcare, employment and services. She has also expressed support in protecting the LGBTQ community from marginalisation due to census questionnaires. Williamson is calling for an increase of the federal minimum wage to $15 per hour. She is of the mindset that increasing the minimum wage for localities based on an amount determined to be a living wage for a given geographical area and then adjusting that wage for inflation as needed is an idea that is long overdue. In terms of national security, Williamson is in support of redesigning the partnership between the Defence Department and the State Department in a way that would elevate the need for peace putting it on equal ground with the need for military preparedness. The creation of a United States Department of Peace to aid in her proposed redesign is something she's hoping to implement, should she win election. Williamson believes that decreasing the military budget and redirecting those funds toward peacebuilding and peace maintenance efforts such as mediation, diplomacy, humanitarian aid, post-conflict transitional justice and on-the-ground programs would go a long way towards getting America back on the right track. She believes that maintaining a budget that would not impede military preparedness while investing in a sustainable society inclusive of retrofitting buildings and bridges, economically empowering women, the development of clean energy and green manufacturing and educating children is not only important, it, it's critical. In the event that a NATO ally is threatened, Williamson supports military engagement in the event that the United States is under threat of attack or when the humanitarian order of the world is at risk. Williamson supports the creation of a programme of which every citizen between 18 and 26 can perform one year of voluntary national service, helping schools, hospitals, infrastructure, sustainability, regenerative agricultural projects, the military, the Peace Corps, that can be remunerated for housing, basic costs or financial support for higher education. Two of Williamson's key platforms rest upon the proper treatment of the Native American community, as well as slavery reparations for African Americans. Williamson is in favour of returning dominant control of the Black Hills to the Sioux Nation, halting construction of the Keystone Pipeline, as well as recognising tribal sovereignty over their territory. She also supports raising funding to native lands justice systems, protecting tribal sovereignty and governance, and protecting native religious freedom. She has expressed support for rethinking treaties and continuing annual tribal nation summits in Washington, D.C. 
As for reparations, Williamson supports the distribution model of 200 to 500 billion dollars in reparations for slavery, spread across 20 years for economic and education projects. The amount would be earmarked to be dispersed based on the recommendation of a selected group of black leaders. In taking this position, Williamson bears the distinction of being the only candidate to ever submit a detailed plan for reparations for black Americans. Williamson first expressed her support for reparations in her 1993 book, Illuminata, advocating that the US will not reconcile its racial and economic divide without them. Where I'm coming from is not that I have a black agenda. I have an American agenda. The reason I want reparations, as opposed to simple race-based policies, is because race-based policies leave open the question, whose fault is it that this gap even exists? And race-based policies provide justice, but it doesn't provide the power that capital provides. And that is really what we're talking about here. We're talking about an economic gap that existed in 1865, that was actually increased with another 100 years. So after 200 years of slavery, you had another 100 years of institutionalized violence against black people in America. My point, reparations carry more than the power of purely financial restitution. They carry moral force. We need to deal with these things on a deeper, more transformative level. This should not be considered cuckoo. This should not be considered wacky. Also poised to shatter the glass ceiling is Talisa Gabbard. Gabbard was born April the 12th, 1981, and is an American politician and military combat veteran serving as the US representative for Hawaii's 2nd Congressional District. She is a member of the Democratic Party. Upon her election in 2012, Gabbard became the first Samoan American and Hindu member of Congress. Gabbard served in the Hawaii House of Representatives from 2002 to 2004. At the young age of just 21, she was the youngest woman to be elected to a state legislator. Gabbard, a military veteran, served in a field medical unit of the Hawaii Army National Guard, and she was deployed in an Iraqi combat zone from 2004 to 2005. Years later, she was deployed to Kuwait from 2008 to 2009. Gabbard served as the vice chair of the Democratic National Committee from 2013 to 2016, when she resigned to endorse Senator Bernie Sanders for the 2016 Democratic presidential nomination. Now a candidate for the Democratic nomination for President of the United States in 2020, Gabbard's domestic policy platform has been described as economically and socially progressive. She has been described as similar to Bernie Sanders in many respects. She is in support of abortion rights and Medicare for all. Though she voted and lobbied against LGBT rights until 2004, she now supports same-sex marriage in America. Gabbard's platform is very similar to those of other Democratic primary contenders on infrastructure, healthcare, climate, education and criminal justice reform. The main point on which she differs from the other candidates in the race is that, for Gabbard, foreign and domestic policy are inseparable. She is highly critical of what she terms the neoliberal, neoconservative war machine, which pushes for US involvement in wasteful foreign wars. She has gone on record as saying that the money spent on war should be redirected to serve domestic needs. Nevertheless, she describes herself as both a hawk and a dove. When it comes to the war against terrorists, I am a hawk, but when it comes to counterproductive wars of regime change, I'm a dove. Gabbard has taken unique stances on issues ranging from Democratic Party internal politics to foreign affairs. 
She resigned from the DNC over dissatisfaction with the reduction in the number of primary debates in 2016 and as a means to support Bernie Sanders in the primary. In 2017, she met with Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and expressed skepticism about accusations that Assad had ordered the use of chemical weapons against civilians, calling for a United Nations investigation into the attack. Should Assad be found responsible, prosecution would take place at the International Criminal Court. Gabbard has also criticized the Obama administration for refusing to say that Islamic extremists are waging a war against the United States. Gabbard champions a national health care insurance program which covers the uninsured as well as underinsured people, one which allows supplemental but not duplicative private insurance. She has called for addressing the national nursing shortage and supports clear GMO labelling. Voting in 2016 against a GMO labelling bill she said was too weak. Gabbard has spoken in favour of a Green New Deal but has expressed concerns about vagueness in some proposed versions of the legislation. She has been very outspoken against a broken criminal justice system that puts people in prison for smoking marijuana while allowing pharmaceutical corporations responsible for opioid-related deaths of thousands to walk away scot-free with their coffers full. Gabbard is a proud member of the House LGBT Equality Caucus and has a 100% record in Congress for pro-LGBT legislation from the Human Rights Campaign, a group that advocates for LGBT rights. Gabbard's position on LGBT issues has dramatically changed over the course of her lifetime. Back in 1998, when she was 17, Gabbard campaigned for an anti-gay rights organisation that was founded by her father. She continued to oppose gay rights after becoming a state representative when she testified at an Hawaii legislative hearing in opposition to civil unions. Since then, Gabbard has apologized for her previous stances and has stated that her views were changed by her experience in the military, with LGBTQ service members both here at home and while deployed, as well as seeing the destructive effect of having governments act as moral arbiters for their people. Four similar women who happen to be four very different candidates each shine brightly in political climate rife with anger and discourse. The glass ceiling is very much in sight for each of them and it will certainly not take long for it to be shattered. They each prove that the only limitations put on what they can accomplish are the ones that they put on themselves. We live in a truly exciting time and the path forward is poised to be paved for years to come.